Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Chill Town Hoops. I'm your host, Jermaine. The youngsters call me OG. My friends call me J-Dub. Let's get to it. You know, the mark of a good team is playing to your strength. And when you play to your strength, that means you know who you are. You know, if you're a great rebounding team, you keep teams off the backboard. If you're a great transition team, you convert. When you do the things that you're good at, good things are, go good things are going to happen. Well, the bad teams are the teams who don't play to their strengths. They allow themselves to play the way other teams play, which doesn't help them. And that's why they stay bad, because they don't adjust. So when I watch the Los Angeles Lakers, I see a team that is not, in terms of their roster, I don't think that they're built to win the NBA championship, but I think that they are built to make the playoffs. And the only way that that's going to happen is that they have to play to their strengths. Well, what is their strengths? They got a bunch of guards who can knock down mid-range shots. Lonnie Walker. Guards and forwards who can knock down mid-range shots. Lonnie Walker. Austin Reeves. James can knock down the mid-range. Anthony Davis can knock down the mid-range. Defense. They're one of the best defensive teams in the game. One of the best rebounding teams in the game primarily because of Anthony Davis. These are strengths that they can play to, which is what they did last night, which is why they were which is why they were as effective as they were. Anthony Davis didn't shoot one long ball last night. His game was in the mid-range and it was at the basket. I love that pick and dive. I love that pick and pop with James and Anthony Davis. The reason why I like it is there's a number of different reasons why I like it. Number 1, the pick and pop with Anthony Davis, what that does is that drags the big guy away from the basket. And not only does that drag the big guy away from the basket, that opens up more offense for other guys. Because with Anthony Davis, once he pops that, now I can get guys diving to the basket for more one-on-one -on -one opportunities because the lane isn't clogged. So that helps that out, and that, that's one aspect of it. Then there's the pick and dive, where James and Anthony Davis are at the top of the key. Because once the mid-range gets going, once again, we bring guys away from the basket, and now we have many more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And Anthony Davis is really good in the mid-post. He's good in the mid-range. And that just opens up so much more offense for them. Just because you're open at the long ball line does not mean that you have to crack it every time. I mean, the Lakers shot 33s last night. I'm not loving that, but I don't hate it. Because the shots that they took were good shots. And the reason why those were good shots was because they lived in the mid-range. I thought they did a good job last. I thought they did a good job last night in chasing Jamal Murray off the long ball line and chasing MPJ off the long ball line. And add that to the fact and making those guys make tough shots. When you do things like that, you're you're, you're definitely looking at success. Definitely, Anthony Davis outplayed Joker last night on both the offensive and defensive side of the basketball. He outplayed him. So when James gets him involved like that, they just look so much better. And it all starts offensively. It starts offensively with them being in the mid-range. That's where it starts. And it also, and it continues with their defense and how they're able to speed the game up and taking good shots in transition. I thought Russell Westbrook looked great coming off the bench. Now, a lot of people were worried about Russ coming off the bench. Could he do this? Well, I don't think that there's a second unit guard in the NBA better than him coming off the bench. I don't think that there's a second unit guard in the NBA coming off the bench better than Russell Westbrook. And he's playing starter minutes. So because he plays starter minutes, right, he plays starter minutes, he can get a rhythm going. He can get downhill. He can speed the game up, which is what he was doing. And he looked really good last night. Really good. I, I, I like Russ coming off the bench. I enjoyed what I saw with James in the pick and, pick and dive, in the pick and pop with Anthony Davis. I enjoyed that. I thought James, he opened up a lot of the offense. Him, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, Austin Reeves, Lonnie Walker, they opened up a lot of the offense. 
because of the mid range. I'm gonna you're gonna hear this from me a lot, guys. And the reason why you're gonna hear this from me a lot is because when you are good in the mid range, that just expands your offense. Teams can't pack the paint because they have to honor that. And when they have to honor that, that gives you more one-on-one -on -one opportunities at the basket. So you're going to hear a lot of that from me. No doubt about that. I thought Austin Reeves was really good in transition with the stop and pop. I just, I, 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 They looked good. There's no, I didn't think that they would go, anybody that, you know, was trying to sell me the logic that they were, they were, they were going to go 0-82. Give me a break. I mean, nobody really thought that. I think that this team is built to make the playoffs, to win the NBA championship. I think that's a reach. I think that's a far reach. I think that they have to play to their strengths. And their strength is being is, is playing on the defensive end, limiting teams to one, one shot, cleaning glass, getting out in transition, and living in the mid-range. Knocking down... Knocking down the long ball when it's available. You don't have to knock it. You don't have to shoot it all the time. But knocking it down when it's available, I think that this team is a playoff team. I, I'm not going to go as far as they're a top three, a top four seed. No, I'm, I would be very surprised, very surprised if I saw the Lakers end up as a top five seed in the West. I'd be very surprised to see that. But I do believe that they're a playoff team if they can play like that. That's the only way that, th that's the only way that this thing is going to work. If they can play like that. Now, that other LA team, the Clippers, that everybody was on me about. Oh, gee, what do you think about the Clippers? They have championship aspirations. Well, two people said something that resonates with me to this day. Kawhi Leonard told Kawhi Leonard said years ago, board man get paid. He told me that. Board man gets paid. And Pat Riley told us, no rebounds, no rings. The Los Angeles Clippers, I do not like what I see from them from a rebound aspect. They've gotten dominated on the backboard, particularly on the offensive backboard. I mean, I watched Oklahoma City in the two games that they played them pull down 33 offensive rebounds. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Zubak is their only rebounder. Markeith Morris doesn't rebound nearly as much as he should. Paul George doesn't rebound nearly as much as he should. They don't gang rebound. Like other teams do. And the other teams, in addition to them gang rebounding, they speed the game up on the Clippers. The Clippers' transition defense has been horrid as of lately. It's been horrid. And I am not encouraged by what I see with this team. I'm not encouraged by what I see with them at all. Even though they do take care of it. They, they've taken care of the basketball. I mean, I, they had eight turnovers last night to New Orleans nine. But they got, they got their backside kicked on the defensive backboard. And because of that, on not just on the defensive backboard, but on the offensive backboard too. And because of that, that's where they that's where they end up getting themselves in a lot of trouble. Leonard, I didn't expect him to I do expect Leonard to play himself back into the top 10 this year. I see that they're moving him along slowly. I do see that. That that that's happening. I do see that they they're moving him along slowly. And, you know, there's a lot of people who aren't particularly happy with that. Me being one of them, because, I mean, he set out the entire season. I mean, if he's ready, why isn't he playing? I, I, I don't get why he isn't playing, if he's ready. When I see, what I'm looking, what I'm looking at when I look at New Orleans, they look like a jump shooting team. Now, jump shooting teams, that works in the NBA today. But it only works if you're effective at it. Right, it only works if you're effective at. It. I think that New Orleans took 13 free throws last night for the 13, 14 free throws last night for the game. They only had two starters who shot free throws, and two sh two starters in the first half who shot free throws. That was it. They got dominated in the paint. I mean, I thought I thought Zion did a great job in getting to the basket, getting on the backboard, which is one of the Clippers' largest deficiencies the fact that they can't rebound and the fact that they can't rebound they're not going to beat anybody i mean after that first game when they played against the lakers when they 58 rebounds since then they've gone the other way and that's a recipe for disaster i think the new orleans hornets are a mike conley 
a Rondo type of point guard away from really challenging for the Western Conference. They're a lead guard away. People keep t trying to explain to me that CJ McCullough is their lead guard. Well, CJ McCullough isn't the lead guard because he doesn't play the lead guard. Damian Lillard played the lead guard and he played off of him. That's who CJ is. CJ is an off guard who can play with the ball, but he plays off the ball. They don't have a lead guard that can give them that. Like Jose, I think I, I think Jose Alvarado is a great rotation guard. Great rotation guard, no doubt about it. Is he a starting point guard or a contender? I, I, I have yet to see that. I have yet to see that. But I do know that the New Orleans Hornets, it looks like they're, they're getting the formula together. Once Brandon Ingram gets healthy, right? Once Brandon Ingram gets healthy again, Zion looks like he's getting back into form. I'd like to see him play a lot more. Because I've said it in the past, if I can get five, six seasons at 65, 65 games, we're going to be talking about Zion as one of the faces of the league. Like we talk about Luka, like we talk about Joker, like we talk about Giannis. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Zion like that. No doubt about that. And they get Herb Jones back. You guys know how I feel about Herb Jones. I'm a huge Herb Jones guy. No doubt about that. So the Clippers have to clean that up if they're going to be competitive. Definitely, they have to clean that up. Speaking of cleaning something up, the Golden State Warriors yesterday, that, transi that transition defense was the difference in the game. That's where they got killed. They got killed in transition. I was watching them last night, and I'm thinking to myself, where the communication was there. Draymond is calling out, you stop this guy. Hey, pick up the ball. The pickup point wasn't being picked up as quickly as it should have been. I mean, Cade, wasn't, Cade Cunningham, he wasn't picked up until he crossed half court. Well, once he gets going, it's pretty difficult to slow him down. It's pretty difficult to slow him down. In addition to them in transition getting beat, they got outworked too. They absolutely got outworked. Sadiq Bey and Ivy, who runs like a deer, just basically outran them and outworked them. They didn't have Klay Thompson, and I understand that logic, but when I look at this Golden State Warriors team, they've gotten off to a slow start, and a lot of that has to do with their defense. A lot of that has to do with their defense. I still haven't gotten a satisfactory answer on why Wiseman isn't playing more. I understand that you're trying to bring him along slowly and you're afraid of, of risking injury, but this guy is going to be key to you guys moving forward and defending your championship. So for him to play 12 minutes last night, I don't think that that's nearly enough. He should be playing, at this point, he should be playing 20, 25 minutes. Kaminga has disappointed me lately. I haven't seen what I think I should see from him. Kaminga looks a little lost. He looks a little disjointed from the offense, and he looks a little lost defensively. I see him guarding the pick and roll. I see him guarding the pick and dive, and he doesn't look engaged. And I think a lot of that has to do with him not maybe understanding the game. And I know he's young. I can appreciate that. But if he doesn't understand, that suggests to me that, number one, he's not doing his homework. Or number two, maybe his basketball IQ isn't what I think it is. But I, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here, but he, he's, he's, he's disappointed lately. I mean, Steph Curry's going to be Steph Curry. Jordan Poole looked really good really good last night, but I'd like to see Wiseman more in this rotation. I think that he could help them out a lot. I think he could help them out tremendously. So I'm liking what I'm seeing early, man. I am. I'm liking what I'm seeing early. I don't like what I see with this Minnesota team. I don't. Mm -mm. I don't like what I see with this Minnesota team. Um, they look disjointed offensively. They look slow. Defensively, they don't look bad. They, they, they don't look bad at all. But they look slow. You know, Cat looks Cat looks slow, and I don't know exactly where it's coming from. I mean, Rudy's gonna do his job. Rudy's a rim runner. Rudy's a rim diver. Rudy's a lob guy. He's gonna do his job. But they look slow. Is it that D'Angelo Russell needs to be replaced, and they need more of a distributor? Does Anthony Edwards need to pick up his offense more? Because, I mean, they ended up falling 20 in a hole yesterday, and they, they got right back in it. And they got right back in it because of their, second, their, their secondary, because of their second unit. They got right back in the game. And because they got right back in the game, I wanted, I wanted them to keep going with their second unit. It looked like they were going to win the game. 
until they went back with Anthony Edwards in the first unit. I'm thinking to myself, you didn't get the same effort from that first unit that you got from that second unit. And I thought that was the difference in the game. I don't like what I'm seeing from this team offensively. I don't. I don't like what I'm seeing from them offensively. I don't like how Cat isn't, he just doesn't look engaged like he should be. He looks slow. I don't, I'm not going to say disinterested. I'm not going to say that. But he looks slow, and I don't know exactly what it is. And it's not because Rudy is clogging the paint, because Cat's game is, it starts in the mid-range. That's where his game starts. So because of that, he just doesn't, because of that, he doesn't look like he gets it going. You know, his game starts in the mid-range, and because he gets that going, let me rephrase that, because he gets that going in the mid-range, that's when his game expands, but he hasn't been able to do that. Like, I watched him last night, and he just didn't look engaged last night. Don't know exactly what it is. I don't. And this is something that has to be cleaned up. I still think that the Minnesota Timberwolves are a top five seed in the West. I do. I still think that they are, but they got some work to do. Yes, they do. So, speaking of work, I'm here for you guys. You know where to find me. I'm going to be here all season. Um, we're going to keep this thing going. But until then, take it light. But take it.